Hi, good year. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ho Fang, and I'll be the MC for this uh, morning, uh, for this afternoon. Uh, on behalf of uh, Ethos Books and uh, Madeline Lee, I wish to welcome you to this event. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank Jess Chong and her colleagues who have been worked so hard to make uh, this place available to us. Right? Now, today we are going to launch a book, um, 1.168. Right? It is a very, very interesting book. Uh, in my, my 15 years as a publisher, uh, usually when you look at a book, it is just you turn from page 1 to page 2 to page 3. But this particular book, we had to do it differently, and I will leave it to Eleanor and uh, the rest of the panel to explain to you why we had to do it differently. But be warned, when you start reading it, you might get frustrated. Because if you do not follow the path well, you're going to get lost. Okay? <laughs> so I would like to invite uh, Eleanor. Okay, I'm here. Yeah, Eleanor. And uh, Su Chen, Dr. Gurmin. And the designer, Winnie, really, she'll be here in a short while. Uh, she couldn't catch a cat because of the rain, but she'll be here in a short while. But we'll start ahead first. Right? We tried to keep this uh, pretty informal, but we thought that since uh, it's such an interesting work, and um, you know how it is at these book launches, usually it's just, it's just stand around and show other people how beautiful we are. Well, we've already done that, so um, I think now that's a. Uh, don't fight it. Um, you know, uh, I thought we might spend a bit of time talking about the work. Uh, I, uh, we've got here, obviously, Madeline, the, the writer, and um, some of our friends who have, um, I think, been with, with Madeline for a while, seen her work, and, and, and uh, maybe we'll talk a bit about this new one. Winnie will join us in a little while. I'm just a total person. And um, anyone who's sort of been at a session where I'm sitting in the facility, this chair knows that we like to keep it really uh, you know, free and easy. People can get down from chairs and get up from chairs as the case may be. Um, drink their fifth glass of wine, roll over, anything you like, including if you've got thoughts and questions, just, um, just bring them along, all right? Uh, so first of all, uh, quite obviously, um, the first question must go to Madeline. Uh, it must go to Madeline and it must be about um, why the title and what's the theme of uh, the book. Okay, hi everyone. Thanks, thanks for being here. Um, why the title? Can I just say that for, for, for a bit? Because, um, well, the, the two people who read all my books this whole wide world will know that um, my, my book titles are always uh, uh, it needs a longer explanation than all the poetic words I try to put together so it take a little while but, um, but about the book it's, uh, it, it came from it came out of a trip to the Serengeti in Tanzania and somebody asked me uh, if I really did go to the Serengeti so the answer is yes I went my younger son um, in a oh, few years ago. And mainly to, to catch the migration of the wildebeest, which we eventually saw while well, flying. It's quite difficult to catch them on the ground. I mean, you might get trampled. Um, and um, the, the wildebeest migration takes in a clockwise direction from southeast uh, of, of the Serengeti place and move upwards to the northwest, crosses the Rometi River where many of the young will get eaten by the crocodiles and it spills into Kenya, the Maasai uh, reserve in Kenya, and then, it, and then they come back down and basically they are chasing the rain and where there's rain, there's grass, um, the rest of, of the paint is pretty dry, so they can do that. And they come back down, they birth, and then they, they go back up again, and they come back down, and basically they never stop. So, I was fascinated by this whole sort of cab and go thing. I mean, actually you do it every day, like, right? you just keep going, and you, you never know where you 
end because you also don't know where you start. And at the same time, um, there, also, there is also the phenomenon of the migration of birds. And um, I don't know if you've been following some of my pieces, but I, I've been writing about the egret that, that comes around to Singapore sort of at the year end. And every, you know, every, every year I see one or two or several a different place, I mean, in a different pose, doing different things. And it triggers off something and I write it down. And then I, I knew I had a series of poems on, on the egret. And um, that sort of dovetailed into the last observation of the Serenity uh, series, which is about the wildebeest migration and it dovetailed into the. This sounds like Nat Geo, right? <laughs> dovetailed into the egret. Movement and and then you know the series just continued into the egret migration and basically comes back home to Singapore and that's where it kind of ends. But then again, if you look at the contents page, you see the points going sort of round and round. It doesn't have a start point end point. Basically, you can start anywhere and you get the idea of the migration and so on. Um, but how to put in a book? And it took us two years to figure out, it took me two years to figure out, but not by myself in the end, of course. Um, I Tell thought about, about a bit about, about yeah. the process of getting the book. Well, into the book. Mm -hmm. I thought about a concertina book that, you know, like these Chinese lanterns that fall out and go back. Uh, printers just basically told me to go away. Um, we thought about, Hufa and I originally thought about having like a scroll, you know, kinds of things. But, um, but what happened was I met this lovely designer called Winnie, who's invisible right now, as designers tend to be. Um, and she, she's given the book a completely different, uh, or you know, a much higher interpretation than I, I could ever imagine. Um, but I, maybe I have to save that for later. But that's that's sort of the backdrop of the, the writing. It really is one long piece. Maybe at this this point, since uh, we're, we're sort of still waiting. Oh, by the way, all of you just keep in mind. Eh, at some point today, you all have to do some work. I'm going. There's going to be a little test assessment. You all listen, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm, my, my day job, day job is, is a teacher. Uh, but first, maybe right now, kind of just uh, ask uh, Suchan and, and Min, uh, maybe just share what, what were some of your immediate uh, impressions about this book, what struck you about this book as you, um, as you saw it. That it must be me, I'm always the one creating the disturbance, so I will check this because actually I suspect that my voice <laughs> the demure, demure as, as soft and um, <laughs> feminine as it is, nevertheless will be able to reach all of you. So I'll, I'll turn mine off and we'll keep one mic on. But let me ask, uh, maybe since Min's next day, let me just ask Min uh, very quickly. What, what sort of, what struck you when you read about this book? What, what, yeah, pass it pass it um, Perhaps I don't need it either. Okay. You, she doesn't want the mic either. Uh, well, right. uh, can you get out the mic? You're, you're really not quite. Yeah. Your voice is not as imposing as you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as imposing as yours. Um, and I'm not as imposing as you. But, um, right. What is my first impression of the book? Well, um, I had the privilege of Madeline showing me the book uh, personally and showing me how to navigate through the book. So um, I should have been able to get through it without getting lost. But um, I must confess that I did get lost. I'm not sure where I got lost because you know when you get lost you don't know when you make the wrong turn. Uh, when you uh, explore the book yourself, you will find that it's quite easy to make the wrong turn. But I was happily going on uh, after having made the wrong turn. And I realized that, hey, I'm supposed to be in the Serenity and I seem to be at home. 
<laughs> I um, figured out that I, well, firstly, I could start again from the beginning. Second day, I could retrace my footsteps mm -hmm. as one that's when one gets lost. Or third day, I could just sort of jump in at random and <laughs> try to make my life, which is what I did. And you know, the beauty about this book, and I'm talking about the physical aspect of the book as well as the poems, is that it doesn't matter if you get lost, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter where, um, whether you've got your directions as it were. And I'm speaking as someone who's very uptight and likes to know exactly where I am. I, mean, I pride myself on being a very good navigator and I'm always sort of having a map there, you know exactly where I am on the map. But you know, the thing about this book, and I think the design is brilliant, is that it gives you the same feeling when you bring through the poems, or find your way through the poems, as it does when you're in Africa. Because I was in the Serengeti 40 years ago, and I have a book to prove it. And um, being in Africa, in, uh, in East Africa, you just lose this sense of having to... In fact, you lose your sense of self, but in a nice way. You, um, sometimes, of course, it's simple. You can lose your sense of self or feel very small if you are the most human person in a group where everyone is more important. But um, that's not a nice way of feeling small. This one is a wonderful way of feeling that you're part of the whole greatest scheme of things. And um, I think the book, both the writing and the design, has helped me to recapture that wonderful feeling. You know, where you just feel that yeah. is yeah. Okay. Mimi, come up and join us right right here. Uh, meet while you get yourself. Um, don't worry, don't worry. We, we, are, we are barely started. Don't worry. Um, everyone, this is Winnie. Uh, she is responsible for this amazing design and in a little while I'll put her on the spot and ask her to explain how she feels about it. But maybe just get, uh, well, well, she's catching her breath. Always must let people catch her breath. So Suchin, Suchin. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. <laughs> so scary. Suchin. Um, uh, you know, what, what, what struck you first? Was it very similar to, to um, how men uh, felt about it. Have, have you been to Africa? No, no. No, okay, so it's you would take something quite different from it, I, I imagine. To me, um, not having been to Africa at all, it is an imagined journey. So it is a journey of the imagination. I, um, I mean, for the last 13 years, I have had the privilege of being known as a mentor. And I've been like kind of nudging her to long poem, long poem. And then when I looked at this, oh, hell, she's done it. <laughs> she's done it. And this, this is a wonderful long poem. It's, it's a single work. work. It's a, it's a, a single, single work. work. It's a single it is work. not a series of short poems. It's not lyrical. You know, it is not what all these earlier volumes show, you know. Uh, I brought them to remind those of you who have not known Madeline in her first book, A Single Lamb. A single lamb has that narrative voice of interaction with uh, events, with personal history, with a granny, with her son, with uh, uh, someone, you know, uh, a love that's lost love as, you know, uh, whatever, for sake. Then come the other volume, you know, 5303, you know, and you can see a shift in the sensibility. But it is a strong poetic sensibility, a, a kind of a voice that most poets, as Lee Supay said in, in the first volume, most poets would take years to evolve that kind of voice. Yeah, but she was quite old now, right? I wait, lah. You know, it's a novice volume, you know. Uh, I could say something for my... Invite me to do this dance or stuff that they'll never get me to, to, to share again. So, be 
because of her, I have to defend, you see, you know, yes, uh, because she's the attacker. <laughs> so, and and I, I, I can see the uh, development. So when I looked at this, of course I was confused, like, like Lynn, you know, uh, getting lost, I was lost, you know, but being lost is part of life. So to me, when I, I read the, the poems, then in the end, I thought, oh, this could be like a nice mandala meditation on life. So what I did was I opened the whole thing exactly like this on the floor. And I read it on the floor, turning the page, you know. Then I kept thinking of, you know, Hindu, right? <laughs> and then after that, turning the whole thing over. So, you know, uh, our lives change, you know. And in the end, what are we searching for? is the center. So congratulations to the designer because I felt that the, here for the first time in a volume the physicality of, of the book fits me, fits the poem, you know. And as you do that, as, as you confuse, it is part of being on a journey to life, to an imagined Africa, whatever. I don't have to go to uh, and watch the migration. I mean, that's natural. That's natural. Yes. <laughs> I should. I'll wait for uh, NEC to find that. <laughs> 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 NEC, NEC, go here. Okay. No, no, no. NEC, not here. Yeah, yeah. So I think this not is the, the right point. This is the right point at which to sort of bring Winnie on. But also, this is the point of the test. All right? So those of you, so first test is how many of you didn't buy the book? But those of you who uh, <laughs> fail already immediately, immediately go home. Yeah? Uh, but those of you who do have the book, those of you who do have the book, now's the time to whip it up because here's here's the test. Yes, you, you can have my copy. <laughs> the test. Okay, then here's the time point to do the test, right? And so the question here is, how does one read this book in an intimate manner if you are for example maybe traveling on the MRT don't have that much space people next to you might might punch you in the face if you, you cannot if you cannot open it out right uh in in, in the way that um this is this is what it looks like when it's all opened up and i'm going to ask we need to talk a little bit more about it but this is you know so this is if you have the flaw to read it right this is if you have flaw to read it but you don't Ah, already, already. I see someone heading towards a D minus there. Um, the, the question here is, how does one read and op open this and read it um, in an intimate way, as as well as correctly, correctly, no. and, and correctly, and maybe get lost along the way, but somehow also manage to get home, right? Um, what is the key to this? This is me. This is the teacher and me coming up. Uh, the student at the back um, in the lovely page. Uh, <laughs> Um, what is the key to uh, follow the line? So those of you who have the book with you, can you try that now? Do you realize how you do that? But if you follow the line, you notice that when you open it up, if you follow the line, here it suggests that the line suggests that you open this way. Now, now here, right? Follow the path. You notice that the line sort of suggest that you go this way, it, it looks like this, and then go down. So you must you must turn it like this. So still intimate, no one in the MRT train next to you will, will hit you if you do this. So now you follow the lines, open up like that. Uh, but now the lines suggest that you go this way, right? Uh, like this. Don't forget to read follow this one. Of course not. Follow the line, follow the line, open properly, right? But also read the poem. <laughs> A good civic civic citizen at the same time. You see, you see how amazing this book is. It allows you to practice all these skills all at one go. All right, did everyone pass on this? Everyone pass on this? Okay. Back to you. Try again. Cal still failing. It's all right. Um, at the back, that Paul, of course, because he's an important person in the arts world, clearly will and very artistic. Clearly will have on the night like shamefully killed. <laughs> We will turn around and see that you're actually lost, right? Me and the better. I'm done. You're good. You're done. You're done. And right in the front, I can see that you know that they the two the of them are clearly doing this with each other. So, um, a message from the publisher, Ufang. He suggests you buy two copies because you're sure to tear one up. Right? So you see, you see someone marketing genius. Marketing genius. All right. Okay. So who is the poet? Uh, you know, that's yeah. to sell you two books at the end. So let's hear from the 
woman um, who basically came up with all of this, the torture, the pain, the ecstasy, and the marketing. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Actually, there was like no marketing idea or like or anything like that. How, I'll be your banner white. When you want to show, I will. Yeah, I will show. Yeah. <laughs> how this um, form came about was because um, Matt came to me and said that she wanted like an accordion book, but she had like too many poems to make it into an accordion book. So like, if you're going to print it into an accordion book, you need a really, really large printer. Mm. It was going to be like so long. So I experimented with trying to fit everything into one large piece instead. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, was, I found out that the spiraling actually um, helped to save the paper such that it can be printed with like um, <laughs> a smaller printer. And it also reflected the, the, the idea of the Fibonacci group, yeah, the spiraling. Yeah. And then when you get, I suppose, to here, and then you, all I do is Would this count as one of the challenges that was especially 
really interesting to do or you know I are you a genius at all? I mean I'm I'm spatially useless. So for me this is this is brilliant and I can't imagine ever doing anything vaguely like this. As you can tell I can't imagine talking a lot. But um, you know doing something is is, is will this be something that was extremely challenging for you or um, uh, it's kind of like it's a day it's not that the day's work and uh, t tomorrow you're already gonna do another brilliant design. All in the days. All in the days. Okay, both of you who need design. Right? This is obviously the person to talk to. Um, after this, I'm just going to ask uh, Madeline to maybe read some pieces from her work. But before we get to that, I'm just wondering whether at this stage we're on the pure mechanics of it, you know, the, the process part before we get into the substance of the pieces. Whether anybody has any questions, any thoughts you'd like to yeah, share? One, one yes, go ahead, Eric. We need how many bottles of wine do you have before you design? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> Kills the little green cell, you know. Yeah, yeah. And when I do my environmental marketing, please do your environmental marketing. I just wanted to say that in addition to winning the uh, design prize, this book and a poetry prize, of course, I think this book is the most environmentally friendly book I've seen. Because uh, in one page you've got 21 poems. Mm. That's a very big page. I mean, this is why I need a while. So I think mean, of the number of trees that have been saved. Mm. And uh, in terms of the folding, uh, I think that is what our government has been talking about in terms of improving our productivity, right? Uh, the process. So, all in all, I think it's a very politically correct book. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many are still waiting to be folded? Yeah, because we're the old people going to fold them instead of cut off. Oh, there we go. So, it's a surprise. All right, okay. I really feel like so, so, you're not giving what we're doing. Maybe now I'll explain the title. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, there are 21 poems in the series, but it's actually sort of 13 poems. Serenity, Lynn, And when I realized that one morning at 3 a.m., I, I just had a big moment uh, because these uh, two of Fibonacci numbers um, because I love maths. It's 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and 8. And uh, of course, the Madeline Lee book title 1.618 is the ratio of the bigger number over the smaller number. And that's a ratio that occurs naturally in nature. Everything that's beautiful. Probably it's true. <laughs> 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 I mean, just look at that. There are a lot of examples of, of spirals that occur in the same ratio. And, and I think we, I mean, we talked about the inside of the book, but on the cover you can actually see the, the ratio uh, the spiral. It's always, uh, it's sort of like, you uh, it's, 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 it needs 1.618 ratio. The line is big square. Mm -hmm.
Um, but then this is what happened when I told my student, writing is about colors. At the start, you know, I will not break up the beginning of that. It's called shades. Ultraviolet. <coughs> In the harsh African light, ray bands cut out ultraviolet A and B, telling the world yellow and birds without purple. There is no amethyst, no indigo, no echinacea, no purin, no royalty, no rainbow, no violet blue transplant. Palette. The early rains break floodplains out in green spots. Mix ochre with cobalt, some salty rust, a storm blue, a dab of caramel, indigo. A plain canvas becomes a palette, preparing but not ready to paint. Some lemon and beige dry up in the north, while dark rose birds pick up coffee ground. Yeah, it is 
more like a, a single uh, meditation, <laughs> looking at you know, the various things that are happening on the surface, and then really that patina of what colors, and then you notice that she read on each gift, you know, a sudden and our perspective change of the animals movement everything changes for us so it's like putting on a pair of ray bands it looks different so that's what the poetry in this uh, present voice it goes to you and as you see what's what's in there you know, the content they look very simple. I mean, if you really look at it, to me, anybody is not familiar with three verse and so on. Three or four simple sentences. Yes. Nothing. Yeah. But, how come that's a poem? A friend of mine sent me a few sentences. She called it three verse. I said, no, they simple sentences. She got to it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wound 
um, basically his dinner was coming up from the side. And, it, and, and clearly that was human, human crazy nonsense intervention that coaches had done that uh, to this uh, amazing animal. And so because of that, uh, the, the, the guide said, we'll, we'll call back to the rangers and we'll let them know about this. So we, we wait around for until so the rangers came out and then they, they and, and of course these these animals are they're so powerful they're in there and they're, they're dangerous man. so they, they told us to get far away and then these men sort of hold it up and they quickly ran away before the the the, the little beast could, could hurt them and, and they ran away so stuck a subtle variation of toasted browns becomes three wildebeest stuck in a bog of black estuarial flat plain group just before big rains loom on the shores of the Maniara when eight burly men come to the rescue. Um, so we talked about the Serengeti bit of it, but then there's the there's the linkage to then the second part, which is sort of the homecoming bit. And um, since he then already has the mic, I'm gonna ask because one of the themes so the theme that runs through the first part is all about Serengeti. But the theme that probably runs through the second part, the, the eight, right? No, the, the Serengeti is not the theme, the Serengeti. Context. Yeah. <laughs> 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 marking, marking, marking criteria, activity or command, A plus. <laughs> 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 Um, Min, uh, the, the second part of the eight, right, uh, of the context of the ostensible subject is um, an egret. The, an egret figures in almost every single one of the, the eight points in the home uh, uh, section. And I wanted to ask you, um, as one of our foremost naturalists, um, you know, what the choice of the egret would be? means perhaps and, and maybe you can shed some um, some like some information share with us that will help us to appreciate those pieces even more um, if we had your know, naturalist insight into, into that. Well um okay do you mind when I take a very circuitous uh, um, is that kind of book? Answer because it's that kind of book. Is that kind of book? Yes, that kind of book. 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 Yes, that and um, also, if one thinks about migration, one also has to think about home, what home is. I, I, I mean, think of these buildings who are inexorably going around and around and, and, and as Madeline, and I think somebody has, sorry, I, I, I'm getting back to home. No, 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 there was more than one that said you had to get back to home. Um, so the, the hardships, the obstacles they face to do this annual pilgrimage is just so amazing. A lot of expansion of the poets here, yeah. um, not just the one with the world music and stuff, but they're having to overcome challenges all the time, push themselves physically, get eaten by crocodiles, and be. And, and the most dramatic thing, I think, is in the Serengeti sort of, which I like very much, is, you know, these babies, and there are about a million of them circulating, uh, 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 and uh, about, um, about half a million camp followers, hyenas, other animals follow them, some physically, kind of, some just uh, black zebras and gazelles, just keeping them company. And about, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about a quarter of a million babies born each circuit box, Singapore government like that. But, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> just, uh, these babies 
the moment they are born, they have to get on their feet within a minute or two. And, right. and then they have to start running within a few minutes. Um, otherwise, they're going to be left behind. So this is a tremendous guide, and I do is that, you know, this, this book is not just a single poem. It's a whole epic, whole epic of life, really, that you're moving about, that we are all moving. So uh, I'm going to move back to the Now the egret, there, there, sorry, I, I can't separate this from the poetic part of the to me, and Madeline's writing is such that, uh, by the way, she's got all her wonderful logical facts right at the <laughs> But, uh, well, actually, we have two types of egrets. Um, well, the we may have a lot more than two species, but we can divide them into two categories those that migrate and those that don't. And um, I think Smagogo does talk about the migratory ones, the Eastern Egret plant, the Southeast Asia, I'll be back in the year as a poem. But, you know, Smagogo, which is one of the poems here, has been described as Singapore's second international airport. Because um, it competes with Changi on the number of takeoffs and landings that birds are paid for. Um, Better. And uh, so, so egrets do migrate too. And um, when you think of the whole migratory impulse, whether it's birds or fish like salmon or whales or or wildebeest, it's just quite wonderful. But at the same time, you know, we keep talking about a borderless world. But um, I couldn't help thinking that in creating a borderless world for humans, we've actually put up a lot of obstacles for animals. Um, you want me to stop soon? No, I okay, as a champion I, of uh, sorry, no, I have to stay here before, yeah. But you know the history of Serengeti, which I won't go into in detail, but I, I really very interesting. It actually covers two countries. Um, the, uh, well, Serengeti is in uh, Tanzania, but the migration goes into Kenya. And um, it's quite amazing. Well, if you follow them from the ground, it seems quite gorgeous, but you can't see the circle as you can see from the air, which I think they cheated in the example. If you see the arrow, it looks obvious. But for the early conservationists, they had to work a long time to make to to maintain this borderless um, between two countries um, route for the wilderness and therefore the rest of the world. Just say you put barriers, you put fences, which has been done in other countries like the Mongolian antelope can no longer go on this regular migratory route because the Chinese have fenced up their part right across between China and China and Mongolia and the Russians have been up their part. So you know they can no longer do this group. But um, the Serengeti one has been maintained and uh, uh, the story behind that is very, very um, moving. It's uh, told in this book uh, by Bernard and uh, Michael of uh, Zemek, I think. G -R -Z -E G-R-Z-I-N-E-K, if anyone speaks uh, German, tell me how to pronounce that. They are the ones who researched the whole group in the early 19th uh, century and then made a proposal that this be turned into um, a national park, two national parks. And in the course of doing this, uh, Bernard was a father, uh, Michael was a son, but they had to do a lot of this on the air. And Michael was killed in a plane accident as a result of this. But I just wanted to give you some of the, uh, um, well, all the work, 
both by humans and all the effort and by animals in maintaining this migration. So, you know, I like the Sumabolo and the Ebert one is that you don't go to Sumabolo and see these Ebert's um, the, the migratory ones. The cattle Ebert's, the very small ones that you see along the canals are not migratory. But the ones with the plumes, the little Ebert's, um, those are migratory. And uh, you only see them at certain times of the year. Um, and you know, they come all the way from Siberia, yeah. And if we destroyed this place, they would have nowhere to come. Each link. And, and they have stopovers that is destroyed means uh, uh, another obstacle for them. So I really love this book because it puts in poetry what uh, is a lot of the facts and a lot of the uh, a reality of, of life for, for um, all of us. Um, I'm going to ask Madeline to pick a few from the home stretch, so to speak, uh, to read. But perhaps just uh, as we slowly sort of meander towards home time, so to speak, uh, are there any thoughts, uh, any special like reading where those of you who read the book will want Madeline to read something, you know? This is another time, it's like we're the, we're the gig today and we just have to send up a little you know, request uh, mm -hmm. slips or um, oh, any, any questions for any thoughts or questions for any member of the panel? Um, you must mean all about Sumatra. Mm -hmm. She will be more than happy, I think.
giorni. Thank you. Thank you. Jazz for you. Thank 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 you. Thank